Hi guys, I just want to go through a few more videos showing you the destruction that is taking place. It is massive. And there are so many beaches and lakes and national parks and county parks that are closed. Closed. So you want a vacation. Oh, you want to go to the national park, maybe just for a weekend, do some camping. You want to have a picnic on a Sunday. You know, at your county park closed. Everything's closed. And here, the Gulf. Mississippi, no swimming. You got to see this. Every single beach on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi is shut down this morning. Wow. The state is dealing with a blue-green algae bloom. The sand portions of the beach, well, they're still open. But health officials are warning anyone who swims in the water or eats fish caught near the shore, well, they could get sick. I think the best option here is just stay out of the water. Period. End of sentence. Period. End of sentence. I've been to the Gulf. These beaches are beautiful. And the heat now, people want to go in and cool off. Uh-uh. Toxic. It, do you think most Americans know that our country, from sea to shining sea, is toxic? Do you think they realize the magnitude of just environmental toxicity all over. The water, the air, the food, everything. I don't think so. I don't think they have a big picture view. I don't think they want it either. Wagner County, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Listen to what the reporter says in the very beginning. <laughs> I want to stay home. I don't want to have to go again. Wagner County shifting gears yet again from recovery back to emergency operations mode after floodwaters moved in again overnight. Two Works for You's Lowering Calendar is there with the preparations that first responders are making to keep their communities safe from this next round of flooding. From this next round of flooding and did you catch that smile? Oh, let's go back a little bit. Oh, Ron, come on, Carol. Operations that first responders are making to keep their communities safe from this next round of flooding. From this next round of flooding? What? What? Next round of flooding? Tulsa, Oklahoma? This was posted? Just, okay. Um, well, emergency responders are closing off roads because those roads were flooded this weekend, roads already flooded for the next round of flooding. It's coming. And what is going on here? Uh, state after state after state after state has just, it's like now we live in, it, it, it's like the entire central plain, certainly the northeast, the south, it's like a just we're in a flood zone flooding 24-7. So many areas. Next round of flooding for you. But these residents are very upset because they want to get to their homes. They want to start the cleanup, the repair. Ah, but they come across all of these roads that say closed can't get in. North Carolina, this is an apartment complex. Greensboro, this weekend, can't get to their apartments. All flooded. Flooding around it. All these fire guys just standing around, hmm, well, what, what are we going to do? I don't know. Well, let's just stand here until we figure it out. Now, look at this. You want to talk surreal? Man, life, wow. Okay, this is Subway uh, in the Metro DC area.
<laughs> okay. I just want to point out something here. It does look as if that woman is like the only one who can see. Okay. Inside the subway, it's flooding. How did that happen? How did that happen? Let's just, you know, make it a little bit slower. But look, I swear, it's like she looks around going, am I the only one seeing this? All right. Everybody else just sitting down. That guy looks like he's looking at his phone. Yeah. Okay, well, our subway's flooding, guys. Life has really become white. I don't know. I, what... You write in the comments section, give me a word that can describe life in the good old U.S. of A. today. All right. Massive. Massive road destruction in the D.C. area. This evening, Rockwood Creek flowing much calmer right now, but this morning, in the midst of receiving three inches of rain in one hour, and even more than that, there was a flash flood. And normally, where Belfast Road is, right up there, there's a pipe that goes underneath the roadway that carries that water from the creek all the way in this direction. But the water was going so fast and debris clogged up the drain that it gave way. The road washed out, and you can see there is a slew of debris all the way down the creek, metal just torn, wrapped around that tree, and now residents have no way of getting to the other side. Less than five miles away from this washed out road, Fenway Road in Bethesda is also no more. Too much water in too little time sent Cabin John Creek rushing over the roadway like whitewater rapids. A small water main that was under the road collapsed under the weight of the flash flood. This is right near the site of the 2008 River Road water main break in flood. At this point today, it's been neighbors helping neighbors, trying to figure out how those 75 residents on the other side of the washed out road can get home to their family, to their pets, and to their loved ones. And then I guess they'll be hiking it. Okay, look, I understand, I understand the force of water. But something else is happening here. This is happening in so many different states and so many different communities and it's happening at the same time what then might be occurring those extremely low frequencies through the ground loosening up the ground bring on torrential rain flooding roads wash away same area Adam, in fact Right over those banks is Pimmet Run, and it looks like a docile little stream now. But at 9 o'clock today, standing where I am, I would have been underwater because Pimmet Run came raging over here and flooded the entire McLean Little League fields. But Pimmet Run wasn't done. It continued, causing more damage all the way to the Potomac River. Pivot Run roared over its banks and over Kirby Road. Neighbors said a parked car floated away. One driver said he crossed over it when it was inches deep, then came back and was almost washed away. There was a four foot wall of water pushing my car back. It was, I just tried to gun my engine but wouldn't. So I pulled in this driveway right there and uh, well, sat there for two and a half hours. <laughs> when the floodwaters receded, part of Kirby Road was gone. In two minutes, I mean, I, that was so surprising, in two minutes. So, you know, now I understand what flash flood is. Flash is. Oh, you need to do some research, sir. Now I understand what flash flood is. Really. Well, flash flood has become our rain today. Okay, um, see the destruction that is taking place to the infrastructure. Okay, sewage. The smell could kill a dead person. It smelled so bad that we could not come in the house. 
Megan and her mother Stacy live on Blumfield Street in Roseville, one of the two hardest hit by flooding over the weekend. We're actually staying at my friend's house because um, it's so bad and you know the cats have tracked up the sewage with their paws so it's not sanitary. The rain came so fast during the storm, pumps and sewer lines could not keep up. How often do we hear that all over the country? Oh, we couldn't keep up. The rain came so hard and fast, we couldn't keep up sewage into people's homes, coming through their toilets, through their sinks, into their basements, all over. I sure wish that people would begin to just use a little bit of common sense and you know, get that big picture of what is taking place what is taking place at the exact same time all over in many states and then really just it should beg questions how many times have I said that okay I know I know okay if you do not know Mike Morales I highly strongly recommend subscribing to Mike Morales he has uh, a nightly live broadcast. Am I right about that? Okay. I don't know anybody else who is forecasting weather better than Mike Morales. And I'm going to play just a few minutes of what Mike has to say. I will link below to everything, so click on this video and then hit subscribe. Um, and he is showing a 16-day forecast, and this was posted 22 hours ago, and that's what I want you to see. These storms are parking in one spot, like they're keeping them there. And by the way, that is what I have been seeing on radar. And I have mentioned in recent videos, okay, 24 36 hours, storms being held in place. Yes, electromagnetic frequencies are very powerful. And I can't believe South Carolina. Well, here, <laughs> rain and storm chances every day this week. Great. Upstate South Carolina into Tennessee and western North Carolina. Rain and storm chances every day this week. It's amazing that these meteorologists, I don't, did they even go to school or are they just putting them out there as meteorologists? They read scripts, but I'm going to read a script from AccuWeather that is really quite remarkable in terms of weather reporting today, but um, let's go back to Mike Morales. If you look at the tornado, tornadoes that happened up in South Dakota, some of them tornadoes were sitting there for 30 minutes in the same spot. I mean, these are, uh, this is some crazy stuff going on. Let me go ahead and bring up the GFS model here. We're going to jump into this. Go ahead and get it over to the forecast models. They don't show up. Most of these ships will not show up on these ship trackers. Not at all. They're pretty much invisible. I've, I've tried before, but I just don't have the time to try to track them down and all that. It's just like the weather modification uh, planes. If you have the right app, it will track them, and it will say they're weather modification planes. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to jump into the GFS model. We're going to check the Canadian model. And then we're going to take a look at a few other things. But then during the next two weeks, we'll be factoring in the weather modification. And you'll see this forecast will be more accurate than any of these mainstream lying sock puppets. I mean, we could just go by the weather engineering programs. But anyway, here we go. We're going to jump out six hours at a time. You seen in the thumbnail where the target zones were. In fact, I guess we could 
bring that up first and to show you where the target zones are going to be. So we're going to put this on the total amount of precipitation and then we're going to crank it all the way up for the next 16 days, basically two weeks. And you're going to see right here the target zones are southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, Georgia, and just right there in the corner of the Car you know Tennessee, South Carolina, North Carolina, and a, a little spot up in North Dakota, and up here in Washington. So that's the target zones, and a little bit there in Arizona. So we're talking to feet of rain and you're gonna see what they're gonna do they're gonna we're getting ready to look here but they're gonna be parking these systems over the same areas over and over just like they have been and they can easily do that with no jet stream pushing these pressures out they've got the jet streams bypassing the United States that way they can easily pull up the atmospheric river and then they just use the next rads to uh, move this thing around. I'm going to be bringing on here in a couple weeks. I've been communicating with David Miles of the Miles Research Company, who is a weather modifier. He calls it uh, weather moderation. He's actually working on something to where he's going to offer, you know, from countries getting flooded out and and all this stuff. I, I don't know, we'll get into it later, but anyway, he's agreed. To well, no, look, this is deliberate, these floods, so I'm not sure what David Miles is going to be able to do. Uh, certainly not with countries like you know, Russia and China and the United States who are using weather as a weapon. The countries that the United States, Russia, China, are targeting David Miles might be able to uh, offer his services but uh, anyway please you should be listening to Mike Morales because what we are seeing are homes being flooded out roads washing away bridges crumbling uh, a lot of destruction and if you do see like well you live in Mississippi you live in Alabama you live in Louisiana two weeks out not inches feet of rain so you want to start doing what a subscriber of mine in, in the Dallas area left a comment saying I think I need to be bringing everything up to the second floor you might want to prepare and take those valuables that you have on your first floor and bring them up to the second floor if you have one. So, what what do we have? We have rain and storm chances every day this week. Every day. Well, it's not just this area. Apparently, it's all over uh, the south. But I do want to bring your attention to yet again a water main break flood what inner harbor maryland baltimore and it caused a train derailment okay look uh baltimore water main break monday generated widespread flooding around m and t bank stadium and caused a train derailment in the howard street tunnel a large plume of discolored water appeared in the inner harbor and local business owners reported ah the discolored tap water that's what they have i guess you'll have to boil your water how many videos have i posted where water main breaks ah add to the flooding um all right this this is really just uh, uh, the incomprehensibility that fills my brain 24-7 now. I mean, how do you reason any of this if you, if you don't know about weather modification and geoengineering? How do, how, 
how are people reading these articles and actually are they not do they just like read it but don't really take it in I think that must be going on a non-tropical system tracking through and triggering showers and thunderstorms across the south early this week will eventually end up over the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico around midweek. All right, I've not been a weather person. Um, I, I haven't, you know, been tracking weather, you know, for my life. But these storms, which are manufactured, uh, as you can see, manufacturing of just these, I don't know, severe weather blobs, blobs. All right, and they're going south? Is this, like, is that normal? Because it doesn't seem normal to me. But again, I haven't been, like, a weather person forever. But it does not seem as if they should be going south. So we've got, we've got these storms that are going to be going through the southern states into the Gulf and they will be parked there as Mike Morales said uh, and then they're coming back. Does that sound like Mother Nature to you? It sure doesn't to me. You see this band of what I believe is plasma right here in uh, West Texas. Look at this. And God, this it, radar today just doesn't. Uh, it's almost like you're. I don't know. It, well, I was going to say it doesn't look real because it's not real, it is an artificial creation. Now, I've been seeing a lot of crossing beams in uh, Miss Michigan. Now, there's always a standing extremely low frequency coming out of one of the, um, I think it's called Clam Lake, am I right? The extremely low transmitter site. But I have been seeing now these beams shooting through crossing in Michigan for about 24 hours. Um, it, they portend danger. That's, uh, but I, I couldn't tell you what may happen, but it does seem a little odd. There's a reason why they shoot off these frequencies. But you got to be in the know to know why. Now, these storms in North Dakota going into Minnesota, uh, earlier I saw articles about more flooding in Minnesota, flooding in Minot, uh, North Dakota, and other areas, and also Montana. But my God, Nebraska. I want to show you what I found on GFS. And this is the 24 hour precipitation in inches. All right. This is June 9, Tuesday, tomorrow. You will have, well, anywhere from, I'd say, three and a half to about five inches in Nebraska. More flooding for you guys. Wyoming and right on the border of Minnesota and North Dakota, the approximate same total of inches. And the next day, you still have these, these torrential downpours. More in Nebraska, they're holding these storms there. So two days, each day you'll have, 
you know, three to three to about five and a half inches. Really. Well, you can come over here. I will link below to everything. You can come over to GFS. This goes two weeks out, and you can see where the severe storms, the torrential downpours will be. This is the tropical depression that they are predicting here in the Gulf. And as you can see, uh, let's go to, what is this, June 11? I mean, July 11, what am I saying? Okay. You have right here in Louisiana, you'll have about three and a half inches, but suddenly you have severe storms developing in the Gulf. It doesn't seem as if they're coming from the southern states into the Gulf. And look at where they're holding it, which is right south of Louisiana. We're at the 12th now, 12th, 13th. Yeah, they're going to hold it in place. Now you have what appears to be three tropical storms. Ah, now you have a fourth. Now it's, it looks like it's going into Texas. But then it seems to disappear. And you just have a whole lot of rain, which is um, the dark green is like three quarters of an inch. Have more on the 17th, more flooding, torrential downpours. Minnesota. Iowa, North Iowa, into Wisconsin. And then it heads on, or it weakens a little bit, but you have now torrential downpours of like three inches in uh, Michigan. So we're going to get hammered. I mean, look at this rain in the eastern half of the country. Days on end. It's like the entire eastern half of the country is just going to get rain every friggin' day up till the 22nd, and then the southern states continue on. 23rd, 24th, moves away, Central Plains, man, oh man, well, so, uh, here, a non-tropical system tracking through and triggering showers, you tell me, is that right, that it's going to be in the south early this week, then eventually end up over the warm waters of, Gulf of the Gulf of Mexico around midweek. The storm will then sit over the Gulf of Mexico. Wow! Now that's quite a forecast, isn't it? That's the plan. It'll sit there for a few days and may eventually become partially or fully tropical in nature during the time period from late this week into next weekend. What potential storm development in this entire area? Okay. Wow. Okay. One of the keys to whether a depression or storm will form is how close the system tracks to the coast. The longer the system remains over water, the stronger it may become. However, it may stay non-tropical if it stays near land 
development of the feature? What? Development of the feature? What? What feature? Have you ever heard a, a weather front called a feature? Development of the feature will be slow initially once it catches and if the feature remains offshore it could gain strength at a fast pace. Wow, they sure do cover their bases, don't they, in predicting or forecasting weather. Well, it could happen and might, but if it does this, then it could be there and, well, it'll be slow, but then it'll, well, if it does that, it will gain speed and since there is a chance for the feature to move over open water, it is premature to say that the only threat will be from torrential rain. What? Uh, okay, so there's only a chance that those storms from the southern states will move into the open waters of the Gulf? Uh, is that considered open water? I don't know. It is premature to say that we're only going to get torrential rain. Petroleum rigs and refineries along the central and western Gulf Coast. Ah, at risk. There may be considerable risk if this storm ramps up. Are we looking at another oil spill? Regardless of development, the system may lead to multiple days of showers and thunderstorms that can spoil vacation and outdoor plans across the southeast this week. Wow, daily thunderstorms in this entire area. The green daily thunderstorms. Okay. Flood dangers can arise in areas that get hit repeatedly by downpours or where a more concentrated band of heavy rain unfolds. Well, they're telling you, flooding can happen anywhere. The past couple of decades in the Deep South, sometimes these tropical features stall and produce torrential rainfall once they make landfall. Allison did in 2001. Harvey did in 2017. They stall. Right. Well, Mother Nature doesn't stall. Man stalls out these storms over the targeted area for however much flooding they want to create. Powerful hurricane and it's not necessary anymore for tremendous rainfall and flooding broad area of moisture alone will cause downpours and localized flooding over parts of the southeast, including the Florida Peninsula, this week, even in the absence of any tropical depression or storm. Ah, okay, so we don't need the tropical depression at all. They're just saying localized flooding. Well, that's our new normal. from western Florida to eastern Louisiana. You should remain alert, alert, sorry, alert, for an increase in downpours and a heightened risk for flooding later this week and into the start of the weekend. Downpours would spread, spread westward. They don't have uh, fact checkers or proofreaders anymore because Computers are generating the articles. So it will spread, spread westward depending on the storm's eventual development and track. Okay, so the thunderstorm start in the southern states goes out to the Gulf. Does it go south? I, that seems, I don't think so. I could be wrong though. And, but the downpours are they're going westward? Isn't it usually eastward? Oh boy. You know, the frequencies are ruining our brains, leaving us with cognitive 
uh, impairment. So you're reading this and you're trying to understand it and you're wondering, is it me? Is it me? I don't know. I'm going to have to have you answer that. After the system leaves the Gulf of Mexico, its eventual track will determine whether heavy rain aims for the interior south or the threat continues in the deep south. What? Okay. The eventual track will determine whether heavy rain aims for the interior south or the threat continues in the deep south. Well, wouldn't it start in the deep south and then go to the interior? I don't even know what I'm reading anymore. With weak steering winds now and into next week, any feature that wanders <laughs> on shore may not be in a hurry to leave. Okay. You can count on flash flooding in an awful lot of these southern states. That's what we're looking at. More flooding. It's so... Uh, this is what we have. All right, what is this? Passive nanostructures, active nanostructures, systems of nanosystems, molecular nanosystems, nanotechnology. Okay, I'm going to be posting a video on this document. Operational defenses, weather control, 2030, Air Force, United States, nanotechnology is being used for weather and guess what? Algorithms are already in place. Algorithms, it's true. It's true. So I will uh, link below to this if you want to get started reading it. Go for it. Just click on that link. But nanotechnology is being used and algorithms are already operating. Yep. All links are below. I hope all of you stay safe. You guys in the southern uh, area of the country, you guys in North Dakota, you guys in Minnesota, you guys in Michigan, um, you guys in uh, Central Plains and Texas. I hope you do not have to suffer the consequences of man using weather as a weapon.